Recently, I've been seeing the term acne safe show up a lot on my social media. And at first I wasn't really sure what exactly that meant. So I did a little bit of research and my research, I mean, I went to Google to ask what the freak that meant. From what I saw, it really just means products that are non-comedogenic, won't break you out and won't clog your pores. So I was kind of inspired to literally dig deep into all of my favorite makeup products, search the ingredients in the acne safe app to see if any of my favorite products were clogging my pores or potentially breaking me out. Shockingly, some of my favorite ones were actually acne safe and then other ones were unfortunately not good for my skin. And when I say other ones, I mean mainly powders and that sucks for a person who has oily skin. With that information in mind, I don't think I will be cutting out all of my favorite makeup products. I will still be reviewing all of the makeup I feel like if I only did acne safe non-comedogenic makeup, it would really limit my love for makeup. Personally for me, I think that I'm going to be more cautious, but I'm still going to give certain makeup a chance or minimize how often I use certain makeup if they do have pore clogging ingredients. In my head, when it comes to pore clogging ingredients, if it's lower on the list, then I'm totally fine with using it often as long as I don't see any changes in my skin. But with that being said, I want to put out a disclaimer to let you know that everything I say in this video should be taken with a grain of salt. I am not an expert. I am not a dermatologist. I don't even know much about certain specific ingredients. I am just your friend searching up ingredients in an app to figure out if it is good or bad for my skin. And again, with all types of skincare products or products in general, everyone's skin reacts to things differently. For example, hyaluronic acid is a really good ingredient. So is benzoyl peroxide and glycolic acid, but um, it doesn't work for me. So take everything with a grain of salt. I am just here to take out some of that guesswork for you and let you know what products I personally love that just so happen to be non-comedogenic and acne safe. I also mainly use high-end makeup products in this video because that's what I prefer to use and test. But if you do want to see a drugstore version of this, then please help this video perform by giving it a big thumbs up, leaving a comment, or subscribing. If I see that it performs well, then I'll be sure to film the drugstore version. With that in mind, these are the products that I would recommend if you are looking for acne safe, non comedogenic makeup products. So, this is what my skin is currently looking like. Shockingly, it's looking worse than when I was on my period. I think that this is it right here is coming from a potential eye cream that might have expired, but I didn't realize that until recently. So this is just a reminder to check your expiration dates for your eye creams and just skincare in general. And the rest of my skin is pretty healthy. It's pretty glowy. I have some tiny zits here and there. So I am excited to finally get some foundation on my face because I'm not gonna lie, I hate staring at myself with a zit on my face. I don't know. I can be the most confident person in the world and I still just get annoyed when I have sits on my face. This is the new Euphoria foundation called Date Night and I'm in the shade 330. First of all, I'm going to do a whole full review on this. This is only my second time using this, but it is a non-comedogenic formula which allows you to sleep in it even though I would not ever recommend that. I think it's just marketing. You could also use the trusty Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place foundation. I was surprised to see that this was non-comedogenic, especially because the formula is so long lasting on the skin and matte, I would consider something like this to be comedogenic or at least have some ingredients that are and there isn't. So this is becoming like top, top tier foundation that I would recommend if you have oily acne prone skin. But because I am trying this out today, I do want to apply it on my face. This does lean a little bit more glowy and hydrating and wet versus the Estee Lauder is more long lasting and matte and sets onto the skin. So depending on your preferences, you can go either or, but I am testing this one out today. So I'm just gonna apply it on my face. One pump gets you a lot of this. I think that this shade match is okay, unfortunately. It doesn't really match my forehead. It's slightly too light. One swipe of this foundation looks just like that. Yeah, it's slightly 
too light or it could be a tad bit more warm that was a very quick application this is from what i remember a water-based formula formulated without silicones and i'm not gonna lie from initial application i think that this formula is pretty high quality i had a lot of doubts because the brand isn't a brand that i would totally go for i think it's more of a younger generation kind of brand but when I applied this on my face, I was like, ah. I, I see what you mean and I see why it's such a high, high price tag. The brand I feel like is marketed towards teenagers in the sense of the packaging and the design, but the formula and the price of it is so high that I was very confused. But as I apply this on, I can see how it compares to high-end foundations. They actually compare this to, I think the Le Mer foundation. I've never tried it before, but this is a really good formula. It reminds me of the House Labs foundation it's very watery like that except this one is a tad bit creamier and less wet less glowy but you can still see a lot of sheen there i do have to say that the shade range on this foundation is not great like when i do my full foundation review i will probably rate the shade range low because i feel like there was just not enough shades even for my skin tone or someone else's skin tone look at the forehead y'all and then even my neck it's looking pretty pale. Another thing I wanted to note is the bottle is glass and feels beautiful. The formula initially when you apply it looks so nice on the skin. It was so easy to blend. Aside from the shade match, I really, really like it. It feels and looks like high-end foundation. So although in my opinion it was highly priced, I do not regret it and I don't feel like they cheaped out or I was ripped off. It feels like, okay, I understand why it was highly priced. Another thing that I wanted to note was the ingredients. So it is supposed to be like one of those good for you kind of foundations. It does have hyaluronic acid infused into it. It is hydrating, won't cling to your dry patches, calming, and helps soothe sensitive skin. It also says that the pigments are coated in amino acid that helps with collagen production and preventing dry skin. So initially, it sounds like a foundation for dry skin, but I'm liking the look of it. So I'm hoping it fades well throughout the day. So if you have sensitive, acne prone, dry skin, this might be something you look into, but feel free to wait until my full on review because I will go into detail about everything. For concealer, I'm using the Tower 28 Swipe Concealer in the shade OC. This is considered a non-comedogenic concealer, perfect for sensitive acne prone skin. I did check the ingredient list and from the app that I use, it didn't say there were any comedogenic ingredients. However, I did get a comment on TikTok and someone pointed out that one of the ingredients were potentially comedogenic or not acne safe. So keep that in mind, do your own research on this. It is marketed as acne safe and won't clog your pores but as I mentioned earlier, it really just kind of depends on your own research and your own skin. I'm gonna have very, very glowy skin today. The Tower 28 Concealer is also slightly glowy, so keep that in mind if you have oily skin. These are some very glowy products, but with a bit of powder, I feel like it will do the trick. Blending it under my eyes. I feel like the Tower 28 concealer gives me medium to almost full coverage. I love how easy it is to blend the concealer. It blends so seamlessly into the Euphoria foundation. It's as if they're the kind of the same finish and they do give me the same kind of vibes. Here's a close-up of the skin at the moment. I feel like it looks really good, but if you have dry skin, combination skin, or you prefer a more hydrated look, these two products I feel like work really well together and the finishes are similar. Something that I've learned in this exercise of checking if my makeup is non-comedogenic and acne safe is that powder products are so freaking 
difficult. A majority of the powder products I found have some type of pore clogging ingredient in it, unfortunately, but I had much better luck with cream products. So keep that in mind. I think the reason for this is because a lot of powder products have talc in it, which can clog your pores. So I'm kind of like stepping back a little bit and realizing maybe I need to be more of a cream product person. But I also feel that for certain powder products, the pore clogging ingredient is lower on the list so for me that's totally fine but a lot of a lot of powder products unfortunately are pore clogging which is so annoying because if you have acne prone oily skin the one thing you want to use is powder products for my bronzer, I'm gonna go in with a cream and the Rare Beauty one doesn't have pore clogging ingredients, which is nice. I'm using two shades, which is kind of extra. I have Happy Soul and Good Energy. I'm gonna use Good Energy on my forehead because it's really pale right now and it doesn't match me. So we're gonna fix that. And then I'm using Happy Soul. Another thing I want to mention with these is that if you are very, very acne prone, you might want to consider applying it on the back of your hand and then applying it on your face or cleaning the very top layer between each use and disinfecting it so that you aren't further irritating or causing acne. For me personally, I don't really think it makes a difference. I'm acne prone, but not to the point where I feel the need to do that, especially because I love how easy it is to use in the stick. So totally up to you. No judgment here, what you decide to do. I really love the Rare Beauty bronzer sticks and I would highly recommend this to like people who like natural makeup because it blends out to be a satin finish. It isn't overly pigmented. It's so smooth, doesn't dry quickly on the face, and it just looks so freaking natural. And if you have texture on your cheeks, the finish isn't overly glowy, so it looks really nice on your face and kind of like, look at that, look at that. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with this. And I like having two shades because I like my forehead darker because that's my natural forehead color. And then on my cheeks, I like a little bit more of a natural color. Gonna add a little more on my forehead. The one thing that I hate about making acne content or talking about acne, especially growing up, is that people like to tell you like what they think is right or wrong for your skin. They nitpick on everything that you do as if you're doing everything wrong to cause your skin acne when a lot of the times it's just genetic. I remember one time someone had pointed out that I like blew on my brush. There was one time I had like powder and then I went like this, like on my brush to like get rid of some of the excess powder which I can see how that could be unhygienic. Another thing is like the stick. Say you have acne prone skin and you use the stick directly on your face and you're the only one who uses this. People are very just like freak, they freak out about it as if like you are causing your skin acne and doing those little things is causing your skin acne or just wearing makeup. Like people will tell you just don't wear makeup. Like your makeup breaks you out. And yes, yes it does. <laughs> Like to an extent, all of anything that you can do in life will break you out, has the potential to break you out. But at the end of the day, acne is also genetic. And I remember growing up like having to be like such a germaphobe to things because I felt as if it was going to make me break out. Not liking when people touch my face or I used to be very crazy about washing my pillowcases and stuff. And I still am, don't get me wrong, but I think it's not really a great way to live, to f live so particularly, live so carefully and not to be able to give you that chance to like breathe and let go and know that sometimes it's not the fact that you used this product. I feel like it's just good to keep in mind that it's not always your fault. It's not because you, you know, took this stick and like went like this and that just made you break out or anything like that because I feel like it just like sucks the fun or the enjoyment out of life. Same thing with even like weight and the way that you eat and being so particular about calories. I feel like with acne that can happen too where you start to become so particular about what you put on your face that it can be damaging to your mental health. As much as I am making this content to help you and support you in any way that I can, I also wanna remind you that it's okay. 
if you aren't doing every little thing that someone tells you. And the thing is, growing up, my skin mainly got better. One, because I did start getting really serious about my skincare routine and the products and the ingredients I used. But two, a lot of it was just me outgrowing my teenage self and i do have this belief that my mental health was damaging to my skin and as i got older and my mental health improved my skin also improved so there's so many factors that go into having acne that i think that people who don't have acne don't understand they simply just think like oh it's because you don't wash your pillows or you don't drink enough water or you are using dirty brushes or whatever but there's so many other factors that go into it that are much bigger and sometimes out of our control rant over i finished adding bronzer i totally went on a tangent my skin is looking very greasy right now but this is a trust the process kind of moment i'm gonna go in with blush now and i checked the ingredients for both the charlotte tilbury and the rare beauty and both of these seem to be free of pore clogging ingredients which is nice again if you are really adamant on being hygienic don't apply it directly onto your cheek you can use the back of your hand and apply it that way sometimes i actually think it works better that way personally for me today i'm going to use the charlotte tilbury pillow talk matte in the shade peach pop because i want a more warm tone look today but i do love the rare beauty blushes this one i'm just going to apply on the back of my hand for the sake of demonstration i do like applying on the back of my hand sometimes because it gives you more even coverage and you can control how much goes directly onto your face versus putting too much right off the bat especially with the rare beauty blushes i'm also obsessed with the rare beauty blush brush i feel like it diffuses liquid blush so well i am 100 percent a liquid blush kind of girly i prefer it i don't really like cream blush so i can't really give you any recommendations there i just avoid them because every time i try a cream blush i just never use it i also really like the rare beauty matte version of her blushes and i hope she expands more but i know most people prefer the glowy one and the charlotte tilbury matte pop is just so much nicer because look at that i have a lot of texture on my cheeks and i just feel like this is one of those products that diffuses it but it's not overly matte. I like to apply some on my nose and my chin. I saw this TikTok the other day where someone was making fun of people who applied blush and bronzer on their nose and their chin and everywhere else. Listen, you can judge me all you want, but I think it looks better. And I like to apply on a lot because I have big cheeks and I just like to embrace it. Every once in a while, I'll try to apply on like a small amount of blush. And you can see in some of my videos where I only apply on like blush here, kind of like the high kind of cheekbone look. And it just doesn't look good on my cheeks. Like I have realized that I need to have like chipmunk cheeks and i'm totally okay with that at this point learning to embrace myself finally we finished with the cheeks and the bronzer and i am ready to freaking add powder onto my face i can't stand like a very glowy forehead now this was the most difficult part as i mentioned earlier there are so many powder products that are just not acne safe a lot of the products are comedo like have comedogenic ingredients at the top of the list which is usually talc or in the middle of the list and it was so disappointing to me. I checked every single loose powder and they all can potentially clog your pores. So that was an eye opener for me. And I think that I'm going to have to reconsider some of my powders. And I kind of question if that is what's causing certain breakouts. So I might take a break from those powders to see if there's any difference. The only powder that survived in my makeup collection that had no comedogenic ingredients i believe is the coat sauce cloud set powder and i do really like this powder but sometimes i find it to be a little bit cakey so i'm gonna apply on a small amount and go from there just going to re-blend out my under eyes i'm so sad like all of my loose powders <laughs> like a lot of the good ones like patrick star has talc at the top of its list so i'm gonna be on the hunt for acne safe loose powders for y'all let me know if you know any good ones that i should recommend or try out i did check the bare minerals powder foundation because i used to love that growing up in high school when i had severe severe acne and that one had no pore clogging ingredients so if you're looking for a powder foundation that is still 
trusty old powder foundation, Bare Minerals. I'm gonna have to repurchase that at some point, but I have so many products to go through that I've just been putting it off. We have a more matte forehead going on. I feel so much better. I hate a shiny forehead. I hate it. it makes me look like I just like went running. I also wanted to mention that the NARS Soft Matte Concealer doesn't have any pore clogging ingredients either, which is so nice. So if the Tower 28 one for some reason doesn't work for you because it's too glowy, this is best for spot concealing, especially if you don't want to accentuate your texture or certain areas on your face. You can use a brush for this, okay? It's probably more hygienic, but I like to use a clean finger because I feel like it blends better. I'm just gonna apply it right here before I apply more powder. If you are going to spot conceal, I am telling you that your finger will conceal better and blend better than any brush I've ever used. I hate using my fingers, but for spot concealing, I will, because it will give me that full coverage and that full control. Now I'm gonna go back in with some powder, tap it off, pat in my oily areas. Oh my gosh, that looks so much better. Powder makes me so happy as an oily skin person. Yeah, this foundation is very glowy because the glow is peeking through even this powder and sometimes this powder is really, really matte. Gonna go in with a powder puff and clean up my blush and contour a bit. This is where I wish I could use powder products, but most of my powder blushes have pore clogging ingredients and most of my powder bronzers have pore clogging ingredients. So it makes me kind of sad. For lips, I'm gonna go with my classic fall lip combo, which is the NYX Brown Lip Liner. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a fan of this lip liner formula. I like a formula that's a little bit drier, but this is super dry. But if you're on a budget, a lot of lip liners you can find in the NYX line and they're like the same color. This is the Buxom Lip Gloss or Lip Plumping Cream in Moscow Mule, which I'm obsessed with. I'm obsessed with this and it smells so good. Let's get up close and personal. This is what the skin is looking like. Even with limitations, the makeup still looks really freaking good. My acne spot right here has kind of disappeared a little bit. Quick recap, I used the Euphoria foundation. I will be doing a full on review once I try this a few more times and do a wear test. So don't forget to subscribe and look out for that video. For concealer, I use the Tower 28 Swipe Concealer and the NARS Soft Matte Concealer, both for my brows and for spot concealing. For blush and bronzer, I only went with liquid and cream. This is the Rare Beauty Bronzing Stick, which I'm obsessed with. And then you could have gone either with the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush or the Charlotte Tilbury one, depending on your budget. And then lastly, for powder, I use the Kosas Cloud Set Powder. This is the only non-comedogenic powder that I was able to find. And I'm not even that confident about it because I don't think it's marketed that way. But when I checked the ingredients, it seemed to be all good and dandy in comparison to all the other powders that I've tried. As a bonus, I did want to talk about eyebrow products because sometimes you can break out there too. And I do find myself breaking out there every once in a while. So I did check the Benefit Brow Gel 24 hour setter. This doesn't have any pore clogging ingredients from what I saw. So I can use this with peace of mind. But the only other products that I use is the NYX Professional Lift and Snatch, and this one does have a pore clogging ingredient. Now that is sad, but I'm still gonna keep using it. I don't think it breaks me out. I don't find that I get a lot of bumps on my eyebrows often, so for me, I'm comfortable with using it, but just keep in mind, if you do have this and you are breaking out, this could be the cause of it. Feel like this could be my new makeup routine. I'm still testing out the foundation, so we'll see how it wears, but those are what I would recommend as acne-safe, non-comedogenic makeup. If you know of any other powder products, 
products or makeup that you would recommend that you absolutely love that doesn't break you out, please let me know in the comments below. Feel free to correct me with your research on ingredients in the comments. I would love to learn a little bit more about this so that we can help each other out. And if you want to see the drugstore version of this video, then please help it perform by giving it a big thumbs up and leaving a comment. As always, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye!